February is Heart Month, and we're talking your heart health throughout the month. ABC 7's medical contributor, Dr. Okachika Alozi with Sunset West Health is here. And today, turning the tables, I'm going to turn him into an interviewer. Doc? Thank you very much, Mark. I'm joined now by Dr. Daisy Nieto of El Paso Cardiology Associates. And so here's the thing. We know that this is Heart Month, and we know that it's the number one killer of people in the United States. Tell us about that. Yeah, well, thanks for having me, first of all. Um, yes, February is the month that we all care about our hearts, so hopefully this sticks for the rest of the year. Um, but the prevalence of heart, of heart attacks, of having a heart attack, is actually um, pretty significant. Almost a million people um, every year have a heart attack, um, the majority of those being first time, but some of them also recurrent events. Um, heart disease is the leading cause of death. Um, and, for women and men, and uh, most racial and ethnic groups, especially, um, and 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 so important topic. Yeah, and so one of the things that we try to do on this show always is talk about how does this affect us on the borderland. And so tell us about that sort of racial and gender breakdown sure. with heart disease. Yeah, like most um, chronic illnesses, for various reasons, um, both genetic and from a social economic standpoint. Um, there is a disparity in, um, in care and in care received um, and in prevalence. Um, so uh, men across the board are more likely to have heart disease um, and then in the Hispanic and the non-Hispanic black population also um, even more so. Okay. And so if someone like me, I'm a 50 year old black man, if I was about to have a heart attack right now, what would be those signs? What would I have to look for? Yeah, so, um, you know, everybody's seen the movies, right? And, and, uh, and so the, the biggest um, symptom to watch out for is chest discomfort. Mm -hmm. I tell um, my patients to remain active because chest discomfort, especially during activity, um, is much more concerning. Okay. Um, it's a little bit different or can be a little bit different from w for women um, that can uh, experience some atypical symptoms like heartburn, indigestion. Mm -hmm. I get a lot of patients who tell me I thought it was I just needed some Tums, um, shortness of breath or um, going up the stairs and breaking out in a cold sweat that just doesn't make sense. So the symptoms can be a nonspecific, um, but of course the ones that most people are familiar with um, are chest discomfort. Got it. And so if I were having that heart attack and I wasn't in your excellent hands, right, I was somewhere else, Damar Hamlin brought this out to us. What do people need to know about hands-on CPR? Everybody needs to know hands-on CPR. Um, it's one of those things that um, most people probably will never need. Um, but if you need it and you don't have it, um, it, it, it the results can be devastating. Um, it saves lives. Yep. Um, and so it's, it, and it can be as effective as, you know, we've all been um, taught about hands-only CPR because um, there really is no need, especially in the early period, to be providing rescue breaths. Excellent. Uh, and so hands-on only CPR is something that can be very easily learned. There's some um, YouTube videos the American Heart Association puts out quite a bit. Um, and I think that Damar Hamlin's episode, um, I think brought to light the importance of and how life-saving having um, CPR is. And so important things are knowing where the hand placement is, um, knowing that uh, you need to press hard and fast. Um, some of the songs that people think of, Staying Alive um, by the VGs, <laughs> okay. We Will Rock You, and sort of singing that um, cadence quickly while you do CPR. It needs to be about 100 um, compressions a minute, a minute. Okay. Um, and it needs to be deep, uh, like two inches, and sometimes you feel some um, ribs cracking, which we've sounds... All, we've all had that. We've all had that, right, and, but that's a good thing. It means that, that, that the compressions are high quality, and that's right. really important. And so up to 80% of cardiovascular disease is preventable. We know about the CPR. What can people do outside of learning CPR that can prevent their risk of ever having that heart attack? Absolutely. I always say knowledge is power. Um, so first and foremost is regular follow-up with a primary care physician. My PCP colleagues are fantastic at assessing risk, and it starts with checking a blood pressure. And a lot of patients tell me my blood pressure is always normal until I come to the doctor's office. And I tell them that that's a measure of stress, and life is stressful, and so it's important that we make sure that blood pressure is normal the majority of the time. Um, getting regular labs, um, high cholesterol is a risk factor, diabetes is a risk factor. So it's more important to know that these risk factors exist and then manage them appropriately than mm -hmm. it is to, um, I think we tend to sort of hide a little okay. bit and, and, and be afraid of those things. And so knowing your risk is absolutely the first step. Perfect, and last but not least, we live in El Paso. I often say you don't need to leave our community to get the care. Tell us about the resources that are exist in our community. Absolutely, um, you know, I, I, especially in the last few years, um, cardiology care has um, 
really uh, become pretty incredible here. We, we used to have to, we used to not have some of the um, resources that we do have now, and so we used to rely a lot on um, transfer out um, to other cities, and now there are a lot of things that we can do here at home. Um, we have really wonderful hospitals and physicians that are supportive, um, and uh, we can do a lot. There's very few things that we are sending out nowadays. Excellent. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Nieto. I appreciate your time. Thanks Over for to having you, me. Mark. Appreciate All it. right, and Dr. Lozzi and Dr. Nieto, thank you both for being on this afternoon.